race didn't matter to me. The first, the first two young men were white. The, second, the third young man was American Indian. The fourth and fifth were Hispanic. It was just their looks. Notorious serial killer Jeffrey Dahmer shocked the world when he was arrested in 1991 as much for the heinous crimes he committed against his victims as for the fact that he killed 17 men and boys over more than 13 years without capture. Well-mannered, soft-spoken, and pleasant in appearance, Dahmer barely escaped arrest on multiple occasions during his murderous spree, in which he lured men often on society's fringes back to his home where he would kill and perform acts of necrophilia and cannibalism with their remains, often preserving body parts as mementos. Details of Dahmer's crimes were sourced from FBI files. Here's a timeline of Dahmer's murders, some of the most shocking ever committed in modern history. The hitchhiker was 18-year-old Stephen Hicks, Dahmer's first victim. Dahmer took Hicks to his parents' house in Ohio where he strangled and beat him with a barbell before dismembering the body and placing it in trash bags. No one had a clue as to what was happening for over a decade, Dahmer said of what would transpire following his first killing. Listen in his own words how he described his first murder. Turned around, picked him up, and... Uh... That's when, that's when it, the nightmare became a reality. They go to Dahmer's house. We talked, had some drinks. I knocked him out. That was the first time. Dahmer would not murder again until 1987. In the intervening years, he had joined the army and was stationed for a time in Germany, eventually being discharged due to problems with excessive drinking. Of those nine years without a victim, Dahmer said the urge was always there. What he lacked were the right circumstances. There just wasn't an opportunity to fully express what I wanted to do. There was just not the physical opportunity to do it then. For years later, he was arrested for masturbating in front of two boys. Dahmer told authorities he was merely urinating. Charged with disorderly conduct, he was sentenced to one year of probation and to undergo counseling. After taking Stephen Twomey, 24, back to a hotel room, Dahmer says he awoke the following morning to find Twomey dead alongside him in bed. Dahmer would later tell authorities he had only planned on drugging Twomey and had no recollection of beating him to death with his fists. Placing the body in a suitcase, Dahmer transported it to his grandmother's basement where, a week later, he dismembered it and placed it in the trash, except for the head which he retained for a further week before boiling it in industrial detergent and bleach, eventually pulverizing the brittle skull. Listen to Dahmer recalling this memory. I had put some sleeping pills in his drink to render him unconscious, and I um, was just going to spend the night with him. When I woke up in the morning, he was hanging over the side of the bed, and uh, I have no memory of beating him to death, but I must have. That's when the, the obsession went into full swing. Dahmer brought 14-year-old James Dockstader to the basement of his grandmother's house after promising him $50 in exchange for posing for nude photos. After drugging him, Dahmer strangled Dockstader, disposing of his body in similar fashion to that of Twami. Richard Guerrero met his killer outside a Milwaukee gay bar. Dahmer offered Guerrero $50 to return to his grandmother's house and spend the night with him. After drugging Guerrero with sleeping pills, Dahmer strangled him before performing sexual acts on the corpse. This time, Dahmer dismembered the body within 24 hours, but hiding his killings and the dismemberments was becoming increasingly difficult. Dahmer's grandmother had become annoyed with his bringing men to her house late at night, 
and with the foul smells emanating from the basement, so she eventually told him to move out. Within days of securing a one-bedroom apartment, Dahmer was arrested and charged with second-degree sexual assault and enticing a child for immoral purposes after luring 13-year-old Kaysun sent the sum phone back to his apartment, where he drugged and molested the boy before his intended victim escaped, taking his story to the police. Dahmer spent a week in jail before being released on bail. Aspiring model Anthony Sears, 24, became Dahmer's fifth victim after they met at a bar. Dahmer, fearing his apartment was being watched by the police, brought Sears to his grandmother's basement to be drugged and strangled. Sears was the first victim from whom Dahmer took trophies, storing and preserving Sears' head and genitals, which he kept in a wooden box. For a time, he stored the box in his work locker. When asked, no one at work thought bad of Jeffrey. He was a nice guy, one colleague said. Dahmer killed Raymond Smith, a 32-year-old prostitute he had offered $50 for sex. After drugging Smith at his North 25th Street apartment, Dahmer strangled him with his hands before taking Polaroid pictures of the corpse in suggestive poses. Dismembering the body in his bathroom, Dahmer boiled the remains, dissolving them in a container of acid except for Smith's skull, which he kept in a cabinet alongside Sears' skull. When neighbors complained of the smell emanating from his apartment, Dahmer told them his refrigerator was broken and he was waiting to get it fixed. After killing 27-year-old Edward Smith, Dahmer attempted to retain the body by keeping it in a freezer for several months. The frozen corpse was eventually discarded, with Dahmer telling authorities he was upset he did not get to keep any of Smith's body parts due to degradation in the freezer. Ernest Miller, 22, had his throat slashed after being promised money to join Dahmer at his apartment. A lack of sleeping pills forced Dahmer to change his method of killing. Dahmer kept parts of Miller's body to eat, something he was doing increasingly, and he painted and displayed Miller's head in his apartment. Three weeks later, Dahmer killed 22-year-old David Thomas. Later, he said he came to realize during their encounter that he was not attracted to Thomas, but he still drugged and killed him. Afterwards, he performed his usual routine of dismembering the man, which he video recorded and took photographs of before dissolving the flesh in acid, keeping the full skeleton in his closet next to the skeleton of Ernest Miller. From Thomas, he also saved the biceps and wrapped them in plastic bags to be placed in the freezer, these, too, placed next to Miller's. The extremely graphic Polaroids Jeffrey took of the dismemberment process are what Thomas's sister ended up having to identify his body with. Curtis Strutter was a 19-year-old aspiring model, patiently waiting at a Milwaukee bus stop on February 18, 1991 when Dahmer approached and lured the boy to apartment 213 to take nude photos, promising him $50. Curtis is the only victim of Dahmer's that he didn't drug first. Instead, Dahmer immediately strangled the young man with his belt while receiving oral sex from him, then dismembered him. He kept Strotter's skull to preserve after crushing the rest of his bones, disposing the boy's remains in the dump. After drugging 19-year-old Errol Lindsay, Dahmer had decided that he wanted a living companion that lacked conscious thought, rendering them completely submissive to Jeffrey. He attempted to achieve this for the first time by power drilling a hole into Errol's skull while he was passed out and injected muriatic acid into his brain. Errol woke up, likely due to his skull being drilled into, but was acting perfectly fine. He knew where he was and who he was with. Jeffrey, in a moment of frustrated failure, drugged Lindsay once more and strangled him to death. Dahmer then had oral sex with the young corpse before dismembering him and disposing of the body. He kept Lindsay's skull as a sick reminder of the event. Lindsay's sister gained slight fame after her victim impact statement at trial due to the fact that she charged at Dahmer. Oldest sister of Errol Lindsay, Je whatever your name is, Satan, I'm mad. This is how you act when you are out of control. I don't want to ever see my mother have to go through this again. Never, Jeffrey. Jeffrey, I hate you, motherfucker. Hunt!
Watch him, Ray Pat. Dahmer's next victim, 31-year-old Anthony Hughes, was dead but still intact on the floor when he lured 14-year-old Conorak Sintasumphone to his North 25th Street apartment. After photographing and drugging Sintasumphone, Dahmer again tried to render his victim brain dead by drilling into his skull and inserting acid, leaving the drug body alongside Hughes' corpse while he left the apartment for a few hours. What happened next is best described by Dahmer himself. Dahmer eventually convinced attending police that sent to some phone was his 19-year-old boyfriend and that they had quarreled after drinking too much. Amid protests from the women, the officers escorted Dahmer and sent to some phone back to the apartment where Dahmer produced the Polaroids he had taken earlier as proof of their relationship. Categorizing the event as a domestic dispute, the three officers left sent to some phone with Dahmer in the apartment, which they noted had a strange odor. Dahmer once again drilled Sintasumphone's head and injected it with acid, this time with fatal results. By coincidence, Sintasumphone was the younger brother of the boy Dahmer had molested in 1988, a crime for which he was convicted, though according to Dahmer, he had no idea of their connection. After dismembering their bodies, Dahmer kept the skulls of both Hughes and Sintasumphone. Dahmer met 20-year-old Matthew Turner in Chicago and persuaded him to travel to Milwaukee for a photo shoot. Once again, Dahmer drugged, strangled, and dismembered his victim, keeping the head and internal organs in plastic bags in his freezer. Jeremy Weinberger was an incredibly sweet and lovable 23-year-old half-Puerto Rican man from Chicago who worked as a customer service representative. Anyone that spoke to Jeremy was smitten with him right away because of the pleasant atmosphere that seemed to radiate from him. Even Dahmer himself described Jeremy as exceptionally affectionate. Dahmer invited Jeremy to come back to his apartment with him. After asking a friend what they thought of Jeffrey and getting the green light, he decided to go with Dahmer. Oddly enough, Jeremy ended up spending several days with the murderer, but at a certain point he understandably started wanting to go home. Jeffrey's abandonment issues came into play, and he convinced Jeremy to have one last drink with him, this one strongly spiked with his trademark prescription sedatives. After Jeremy lost consciousness, Dahmer drilled into his skull and injected his brain with boiling water, foregoing the acid technique. This didn't work well for Jeffrey after the man woke up seeming okay, so he forcibly drugged him again and gave him another injection of boiling water to the brain, sending the poor man into a coma for two days. When Dahmer returned home on the second day of Jeremy's coma, he found that the man had died with his eyes open. He dissolved the body in acid after dismembering him and placing his head in the freezer, then carried on with his day. When a friend of Sweet Jeremy's found out about his murder, the same one who told him Jeffrey seems all right before watching them leave together, he couldn't help but feel responsible. He wasn't prepared to bear the guilt of the horrific event and committed suicide. He was found bleeding to death outside of his home. Days later, after agreeing to pose nude, 24-year-old Oliver Lacey accompanied Dahmer back to his apartment, where Lacey was drugged and then administered chloroform over the course of a day in an attempt to render him alive, but unconscious. After strangling Lacey, Dahmer had sex with the corpse, storing the head and heart in the refrigerator and the skeleton in a freezer. Joseph Braidhoft was the final victim of Jeffrey Dahmer. He was going through a divorce at the age of 25 and had three children. 
He offered him $50 to come back with him to his apartment to drink and pose for photographs. He was then slipped a drug drink and strangled. Jeffrey continued having sex with the man's corpse for a few days, but his head began housing a maggot infestation so Jeffrey dismembered him. Dahmer cleaned out Joseph's decapitated head and stored it along with his torso in the freezer, dissolving the rest of his body in acid inside the 57-gallon drum in his bedroom. Two Milwaukee police officers were flagged down by an agitated man with handcuffs attached at one wrist. Tracy Edwards, 32, told the officers the freak had placed the handcuffs on him and that he had spent the better part of the evening trying to escape from a nearby apartment where he was being held captive. Upon their arrival at his apartment, Dahmer invited the attending officers inside, admitting it was he who had placed the handcuffs on Edwards and that the keys were in his nightstand. On entering the bedroom, one officer noticed a partially open drawer filled with Polaroid pictures of numerous bodies in differing states of dismemberment. Brandishing the images, the officer returned to the living room, reportedly saying to his partner, these are for real. Seeing the images, Dahmer attempted to escape, but was quickly subdued by police, who immediately called for assistance. When authorities opened Dahmer's refrigerator door, they found the severed head of a black male on the bottom shelf. Authorities would discover four other severed heads in Dahmer's kitchen, two human hearts in the refrigerator, seven skulls in Dahmer's bedroom, as well as an entire human torso in his freezer. Further investigation at the apartment would reveal preserved sexual organs, two entire skeletons, severed hands, and a further three torsos submerged in acid. Asked following his arrest if he was glad it was over, Dahmer stated he was not glad, that he liked his lifestyle and found it exciting and thrilling, according to FBI files. When authorities asked Dahmer if it would be possible to lead a normal life if he were ever released, the murderer responded that the best place for him was prison, because if he ever got out, he would go right back to the same behavior, including killing. Sentenced to 16 consecutive life terms, Dahmer was killed by fellow prison inmate Christopher Scarver in 1994.